Hello and welcome to Nathan's Garage. I am Nathan Kershaw and today we are going to see if the Mutt's new heart is going to beat or whether it needs a transplant. If you'd like to support the channel, go down to the description. You can see everything and any way you can support it. Like, look at this amazing frame swap faction t-shirt. If you want one, head down into the description. If you'd just like to leave a tip for the channel, head down to the PayPal pool, what we like to call the tip jar. Okay, without further ado, let's see if it works right so we've just given the uh testing turbo a bit of a tickle with a cleaning stick slightly better than that one so bad <laughs> oh my god so we're gonna throw that on now make a little bit of progress turbo's on it's a little bit windy so um i hope you can hear me the person who previously worked on this, these are oil and water feed lines. They have copper crush washers on both sides. They didn't feel they were needed. So I'm gonna to go to scrapyard tomorrow. I broke the clip for the fuel line. So I need to get one of those from the yard tomorrow. Now, what I wanna do right now is, inlet manifolds going back on and all the PCV and everything. One way to make it a lot easier is to take the radiator and intercooler off. And one thing dawned on me in my mind, the intercooler to throttle body pipe was absolutely full of oil meaning from that outlet down i wouldn't be surprised if the intercooler's full of oil as well that's the next experiment at nathan's garage i guess yes the intercooler has some oil in it wow volvo yoda for the win again i'm quite sure there's some extremely noxious situation going on inside here right now game on so there we go the uh it may look a bit out of place i'm thinking it kind of does look a bit out of place but hey ho let's hope that the rest of the engine feels like it needs to be the same as oh my word wow you look amazing happy new year this is a smoke show right i I guess we had to Google it. Um, <laughs> thank you for that comment. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, I, was, I got ready. I was going to surprise you when you came in and then I thought I would say, Happy New Year. You look yeah. amazing. Happy New Year to the entire channel. Uh, You're welcome. Huh? Yeah, we have food. It's the current shop where it hasn't started yet. Really? <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Baby, you're amazing. I love you. <laughs> And you're welcome. Wow. I don't want to carry on doing this now. Different day, different year. Focus has been regained. Made a little bit of progress. Done some stuff on the back. Went to scrapyard. Got some of the crush washers to go on all oil lines and all that kind of stuff. Got various bits, uh, fuel pipe clips and stuff like that. Now, PCV. So modification of Volvo Yoda told me to do, and always does is, this usually has a big, like a, a like a U shape on it going around the outside. So it kind of wraps around and it's a water line and I assume it's for a different climate than we have. So the water pipe is right there. And what this allows you to do is it just gives you more room to take the inlet manifold off. So that is now separate. So I just, you know, that's just a vacuum circuit now. Just when you thought, this car could not get any more oil. The spark plugs are draining as well. Now, most of the time when I'm doing this, there is an element of stumbling through it and finding my way as I go. And logic gets applied a lot because I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Now, as you just saw from the plugs, full of oil, meaning those two cylinders, cylinders one, three and four are full of oil. Logically for me, I would say turn the engine over now with no plugs in. It'll make a mess, but it'll blow oil out of the barrel, you know, each cylinder. So I think I'm gonna do that. Wonder if it'd be messy. Four. 
five quarts just gone in and of course no build on Nathan's garage would be complete without some Marvel mystery oil. So while I'm using my logic and blowing the oil out of the cylinders, I actually want to see if the oil light goes out as well because I want to build up full oil pressure before the car tries to start. So right now, the coils are out. She ain't starting. There's any oil dripping out. Eh? Not yet. <laughs> We have oil pressure. So we got oil pressure, plugs are now in, everything's in connected, so it should start. I have a huge issue with the oil pan on this end of the car. I may have left an O-ring out, didn't clean it enough, and the, the anaerobic sealant hasn't sealed. And the bolts weren't that tight on that end. Something's wrong and it's pissing out. So I still want to start it though, I just want to see. And um, so it's not going to start for very long. I'm going to double check. I nip the bolt up, so I'll double check and see if it's helped. Yeah, I did something wrong. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, and off she is again. Nice and clean in the bottom, but gonna get another clean. We must pay more attention to O-rings. Damn it. Okay, new ones are on the way. Just thought I'd take a second. Um, just done some work on the mot and taking out the drivetrain really obviously opens up parts that I've not seen before and I'm really surprised how much I've grown and learned of this project as a builder and what I do vastly different next time and how I prep differently. Things like A-pillars. So obviously I've got the firewall going to the bug A-pillar and I have a load of kind of vertical sheets, if you will, all point forward. Nothing's boxed. And now because everything's built, I can't get to it to box it. So it is what it is, this build is what it is. Um, when she's done, which she will be, don't panic, uh, I will be a much better builder. Um, so yeah, so it's just very, I just wanted to, just a little quick break and say, it's very interesting how I'm seeing things. Doing something like this is so vastly different than doing a truck, uh, a frame swap on a truck, just for the volume of work, even if you use the floor on the firewall from the Crown Vic, which I've done once, this is, you know, four or five times as much welding. Uh, and this car, weirdly, you know, all the mounts of diffs and everything was broken, so I had all that fabrication to do as well, all that strengthening to do as well. Um, yeah, things like gas tanks, you know, big holdups like that, that messed with my head, that you don't get on a truck, because uh, it all just you know, it just works. So yeah, so anyway, just a quick little break from the work. So that's what I'm talking about there. You can see I've got a vertical piece there and I can't get behind there and I've not got enough access to box that in. And boxing this in just won't work. Obviously I'm gonna finish all this right there. That's all gonna be welded in and seam sealed and all that kind of stuff. And everything's gonna be seam sealed on the other sides, but there's gonna be you know, it's, everything's going to be drainable, but there's still going to be kind of deep crevasses. And same on that side. Just things that, as I say, next, next time I do this, it's going to be different. But it's still going to be one hell of a car. I'm still, you know, still awesome. Got to close up all this. And then, uh, obviously, after uh, my little operator error with the O-ring on the pan, a couple days, should have another O-ring. That pan will be going back on. We can listen to the engine again. Transmission's now out, rather, rather oily, gonna give it a wash. 
uh, take some numbers off it and then see what I can do for adapters to go onto that engine. Now I feel like working on it. Right, second time lucky as you can see, only the best for this little minx. STP's own pro formula, scientifically treated protection. That's how I roll. $17 of well spent money. I'm only putting five quarts in, because that's what I bought. And then if I want to Put the additive in, then that'll make up another quarter. Quart, quarter, quart. Um, and I don't have one right now. I'll have to go to the shop and get one. So I think it'd be fine with five. I pulled all the coils just to see if we can get some oil pressure before she fires. Doesn't seem to be pissing out yet. Moment of truth. Not pissing out, still has a miss. Hopefully it'll come back to life as it you know warms up a bit and um gets the plug hot. Well as you can see here, a little dismantled. The original plan was to clean the sump, put it back on, hope the engine was good, and then kind of chop the car around the engine, thin the wiring and have as little wiring as we possibly could to have the car running. But then this happened. So, the engine is not good. So what we've decided to do, I'm using Volvo Yoda's wisdom, is he's like, just chop out the really obvious stuff, like ABS, like ABS, and leave everything else and hide it. And I'm building a framework, as you've seen, in the, the mod to hide wires behind. So I'm going to go with that wisdom. So we're just breaking it down. It is a new day, but we are still chopping. I feel like taking the roof off today. Doors and roof. Feels like a good thing to do. I don't like taking dashes out, which are underneath windshields. Don't like it. Been at it for a few hours now, and we're doing okay. So, sunroof is all out, and look at this, this is pretty spectacular. Well, the back garden right now is pretty spectacular, but look at these crafty Swedes. Yeah, plenty of stuff there. Look at these crafty Swedes. Carpets are in sections. That is genius. That is absolute genius. One section, and I think then this rear part, there's just a section, absolute genius. You know what, people? Can't really fault these Volvoians. They're pretty good. Look, yes, more carpet sections. Genius. That's that, center console's out now. I'm being terribly inconvenienced by this B pillar. I think this car would look so much better as a coupe, a single outlet coupe. Okay. 
We're going to the other side. Shall I film that? Because it's kind of the same. People of the Windshield Preservation Society, look away now. When you use the AC after doing this though, you get a bit of, you know, glass in the teeth. Whenever I've done Crown Vicks, I always keep the back glass intact because the whole back of the car comes off in one piece. But I'm taking this top off and I hit it, and now I realize it's not, doesn't have the plastic layer or laminated in here. So it all just went. Yes, that answers that question. Feeling pretty good about today. So we got a good lot done. Unfortunately, the shop vac, which is in there somewhere, um, died. So we're a bit messy. So we're gonna go to uh, Fraba Hate tomorrow and get another shop vac keeping all that stuff for the windshield because as far as I can remember Volvo Yoda says the rear view mirror has some sort of security module in it that talks to the key something like that so that's going to stay there for now but yeah tomorrow dash will come out after I've vacuumed a bit and we'll see what's behind there because I don't know well I guess we know the answer to that question now a transplant is needed or basically the entire inside changing and then it'll be fine and it's kind of exciting because the only thing that actually really changes is I wanted to kind of make this a, a fun skateboard to drive around the block in until we actually took the engine out but that's not going to happen now unfortunately because the engine has to be rebuilt and then what we are able to do in that situation is have a look inside the engine and make sure it's good moving forward and nice and healthy so that's it thank you so much for watching See you next time.